What's going on YouTube? It's Mid40s Gamer here coming at you with some more Elden Ring content. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to complete the Alexander Pot quest so you can get your greedy loot mittens on one of the more powerful talismans in the game, which is Alexander's Shard. This talisman is a must-have since its main function is to greatly boost the attack power of your skills. Alexander's quest is long and involved with interactions that follow a natural progression and you'll run into Alexander around just about every corner as you follow the main story arc. If you want to reach the very end of the quest, you'll also need to pursue both the Jar Baron and the Dialos quest. So let's get ready for an epic adventure, tell Melina a watched pot never boils, and get after it. Our story begins in Limgrave where Alexander is first encountered, and as you can see from the map footage, the location we'll be tracking down is within Storm Hill to the east of Stormville Castle. You'll first hear Alexander's voice from the road, which eerily resembles the voice of Sigurd of Katarina if you've ever played Dark Souls 3. Alexander is stuck in a ditch down the road from a fortified enemy encampment near the Saints Bridge side of Grace, which faces a bridge with a mad pumpkin head enemy patrolling it. When you get near the area, you'll hear him calling for help, and you'll need to do some mild climbing to get to him. As he comes into view, you'll notice Alexander is a living jar with arms and legs, albeit a polite one and not like many of the other living jars you'll come across, which will attack you on sight. Alexander will request that you knock him loose and all you need to do is stand behind him and hit him a few times with whatever you're wielding. Once Alexander pops loose, you'll receive the triumphant delight gesture for your troubles and once he gets his feet back under him, you can continue talking with him. After exhausting his dialogue, he'll mention the Radon Festival, which is an organized event that warriors across the land have been invited to participate in to give General Radon a warrior's death. After resting at the next side of grace you happen to come across, Alexander will move to his next location, which will be the Gale Tunnel, and as you can see from the map footage, you can reach this area early on in Kalid. It's also the same location where you can grab the Moonvale Katana, which is easily one of the best weapons in Elden Ring. If you need a full guide on how to recover the Moonvale, we'll leave a link in the description just for you. As you follow the game footage, it is important to note that there is a back entrance to the tunnel in Limgrave that'll let you talk to Alexander, but in order to hear everything that he has to say at this location, you'll want to enter from the main entrance in Kalid. Which may seem daunting at first since it appears to be a sheer drop all the way down. Not to worry though, there are ledges lit by candles that you can jump down onto in order to reach the bottom safely. The Gale Tunnel is extremely small as dungeons go and you can easily sprint your way through it with little trouble at your base level. Once you open the locked door Alexander standing behind, you can expect to hear everything that he has to say. From here you can exhaust all his dialogue and he'll mention the Radon Festival once again, which he seems very intent on participating in. Once you rest at the site of Grace, which is right next to you, Alexander will leave for Radon's Festival. Our next stop on this magical mystery tour is the impassable Great Bridge site of Grace in Kalid, and as you can see from the map footage, it is actually pretty far to the south of our previous location. Once you unlock Radon's Festival through Rani's quest or simply by entering the Altus Plateau, you can activate the portal near the site of Lost Grace and head into Redmain Castle's courtyard. This area will be void of enemies, giving you the freedom to head into the main castle area in order to talk to the festival participants. Lo and behold, Alexander will be among the warriors in the courtyard of Redmain Castle before the boss fight, and once you head over to him and have a chat, he'll greet you in his jolly Katarina accent and explain how overly excited he is for the upcoming fight. At this point, Alexander can be summoned during the Star Scourge Radon boss battle, but it is still unclear if summoning him into combat is required to continue his questline. As bosses go, Radon isn't really a heavy lift since you have the ability to summon so many NPCs to your aid. You can use this veritable army to your advantage in this fight and load Radon up with whatever status effects blow your skirt up. One of the easiest methods at this stage in the game is the Dragon's Rot Breath, which does a considerable amount of damage over time. After smashing Radon and taking a break at the Site of Grace, you can find Alexander nearby digging in the sand, waffling on about how he's going to set out to become even stronger. After exhausting all his dialogue, he'll move on to his next location. The next location we'll meet Alexander in is Laerna of the Lakes above Jarberg, which is off the beaten path a bit, but not challenging to find if you know where to look. As you can see from the map footage, we'll be starting out at Laerna Highway North. If you do have the Artist Shack unlocked, it is a bit closer, but how it originally shook out, we ended up starting here. 
After traveling northeast for a bit and moving north along the cliff face, you'll end up hearing Alexander calling out for help once again. From here, you can continue traveling north for a bit following the cries for help, and you'll eventually come across Alexander, who is once again stuck, but this time he'll need a little lubrication since he's stuck worse than that pin between the legs of your ex's voodoo doll. After talking with him for a bit, he doesn't give you too much guidance as to what kind of lubricant is actually needed to get him unstuck, and trying to figure it out isn't overly easy. The lubricant you'll need to acquire isn't flavored or the kind found in aisle 17 of CVS, but the kind you'll find in the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook number 17, which can only be obtained from the Nomadic Merchant in the underground Shifra River. As you can see from the map footage, we'll head over to the Third Church of Marika, which is just a stone's throw away from the elevator platform that brings you to the underground Shifra River. Once you have boots on ground at the church, you can hop on Torrent and head to the south, keeping the Minor Erd Tree in your sights, and you'll eventually come across the lift that'll take you to the unique underground area. The Shifra River region is a vast underground area with trees, wildlife, and lush terrain, and a rather amazing looking magically enhanced sky that looks like a night sky would on the surface. From here, all that's left to do is hop on the lift and take it to the bottom, and there you'll find the Shifra River Well Depth Side of Grace, as well as quite a few things you can loot up in the area. There is a ruin ahead that you have to make your way through, which is full of enemies, and while they do move slowly, you'll need to be careful when dealing with them in large numbers as they can easily swarm you. After progressing forward, you'll eventually get to the Shifra Riverbank side of Grace, and as you can see from the map footage, it really isn't that far from the entrance if you just make a mad dash past all the enemies in your way. After taking a quick break, you can hop on Torrent and travel north a bit until you reach some scaffolding, allowing you to climb the second set of pillars in your path. It is important to note that there are two enemies on the scaffolding that we cleared out of the way before showing you this route, so we figured we'd warn you in advance. From here, you can climb up the ladders and head west on the scaffolding into the cliff where you'll reach a point to drop down to talk to the merchant. As merchant storylines go, it's interesting that after talking to the first merchant you come across who said that his people are wanderers and have long been spurred by the grace of gold, you could almost surmise that these merchants come from another realm somewhere outside of the reach of Queen Marika's dominion. After opening up the shop menu, we'll pop in and pick up the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook number 17, craft up a few oil pots, and head back to Alexander. After throwing a few of the oil pots at him to grease him up, you can give him a few more wax with your weapon of choice to pop him out of the hole that he's stuck in. After exhausting Alexander's dialogue, which revolves around him heading towards Volcano Mountain, it's a good idea to descend into his hometown of Jarburg to talk to the Jar Baron, which you can get to by jumping down on the giant gravestones that are sticking out of the cliff right near Alexander's location. Jarburg and Jar Baron play a role in the very final stages of Alexander's quest, seal up the storyline a bit, and are also intertwined with the endings of the Dialos questline that was finally fixed after patch 1.03. Our next stop will be the schoolhouse classroom within the Academy of Rey Lucaria, where we'll take a shortcut to the Seedwater Terminus site of Grace in the Volcano Mountain. You'll be unable to get to the site directly from the Volcano Manor, and getting to this area of the map is far more painful than getting icy hot in an area that it doesn't belong. As you follow the game footage, keep in mind that Seedwater Terminus can also be reached by following the canyon from the Seedwater River site of Grace in the Western Altus Plateau, and it's also reachable from the Volcano Manor, but you need to be Spartan kicked by Patches after following his Rainbow Stones, right near the area where Anastasia the Tarnished Eater invades. But to us, this route seems the most direct, which requires you to be abducted by this mechanical construct. After getting abducted, abused, and shaken around so much that you die, you'll wake up in the abductor virgin pits of the Volcano Manor, which is a dumping ground for the manor itself. Once you get your bearings, you'll have a bit of a run in front of you and a mini boss before hitting the seed water terminus side of grace. Not to worry though, the path out of this area is a very linear one and it's unlikely you'll go astray. The good news is, is that there's a side of grace halfway through this run and while it's surrounded by a few minor enemies, having this rest point makes things just a bit easier. After taking a quick break, we'll jump across the lake of lava, down a hole on some ledges and head to the boss's chamber. The mini boss fight in this instance is comprised of a pair of abductor virgins, and while we make this look easy since Ancient Dragon Lightning is like playing with a cheat code, it may be challenging for those who aren't too keen on the double boss fights. 
As you can see, abductors are weak to lightning, but are immune or have strong resistances to everything else, so write that down. After bringing down this pair, you'll be awarded with the Inquisitor's Girandol, which scales primarily with strength, dexterity, and faith, with a blood loss buildup of 50. Beyond this point, you'll exit into Mount Gelmir, and once Torrent becomes available again, you can ride off to the southwest until you reach the Seedwater Terminus site of Grace. This area is overshadowed by Fort Layad, which is found on the western edge of Mount Gelmir, and the remnants of the Fire Monk Siege is still apparent. After lighting the Site of Grace, we'll take another quick break and prepare for the Magma Worm fight in the Lava Lake, and as you can see from the map footage, it's only about 300 meters to the southwest, and the ride should take you through what's left of the siege field outside of the fort's western walls. Now that all that word salad is out of the way, we'll hop on Torrent, head towards the fort, enter the siege fields, and head southwest until we reach the lake and face off with the Lava Worm. Once the worm is no more, we can move out into the fiery lake and find a safe space to speak with Alexander, who seems to be giving himself a VO5 hot oil treatment. There is a rock island in the lava near Alexander's location from which you can talk to him and accept his gift, which is a very famous handcrafted jar helmet that's the bane of Melania's existence. Alexander will remain at this point even after you've exhausted his dialogue until you summon him for the fire giant fight. As you may have guessed from the map footage, our next stop will be to face off with the fire giant within the mountaintop of the giants, and while this may seem like a scary fight filled with one-hit deaths, it really isn't all that bad since you have a lot of room to maneuver. This lumbering behemoth is weak to all physical damage as well as lightning and magic, so make sure you have all of the necessary tools for this hunting trip. Once the fire giant is defeated, Alexander will move from the lava pits to his final destination. Alexander will appear for the final time in the crumbling Pharaoh Missoula, and as you can see from the map footage, you'll need to have progressed to the Dragon Temple Lift side of Grace, and in order to actually get here, you'll need to unlock a Stone Sword Key fog door. It's also important to note that progressing in Alexander's quest will also remove a rather large white dragon mini-boss that's usually on this platform, which would indicate that Alexander made some short work of it, dropped it with a boot to the skull, and cleared it from the platform. It may be important to keep in mind that even though you'll receive Alexander's shard, which, let's be honest, it's the ultimate prize for taking up such a long questline adventure, his storyline doesn't exactly end with his untimely death on this floating platform. Once you're done here, if you're someone who needs story closure, You'll have to complete the Dialos questline in order to complete Jar Baron's questline, which ties into the ultimate ending of Alexander's story. After talking with Alexander for just a bit, he'll challenge you to a duel, which is a common NPC theme when it comes to Soul Series games. With the fight agreed to, we'll call down an ancient lightning storm on this iron pitcher of Kool-Aid, and then finish him off with a few slashes from the Rivers of Blood. Once Alexander has been defeated, you can talk to him one last time, and once you exhaust all his dialogue, he'll explode into hairy pieces of blood, granting you Alexander's shard at long last. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Elden Ring video as we take possession of what is very likely some of Star Scourge Radon's 2000 parts that were stuffed inside the pot called Alexander. We would like to take this time to personally thank you for watching, and if you're new to the channel and found any value in this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering how Harvard University was founded before calculus was discovered, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. So until next time, just remember, roller coasters were originally designed to distract Americans from sin. The inventor of the Pringles can is now buried in one, and as always, good hunting.